Hi, I'm Dmitro Shvets, your host at the Start Global Insights, where I interview local experts in different countries about local insights and international expansion experience. In this Christmas episode, we will talk about magical and beautiful Italy with our guest Dario Peironi. Dario is the chairman of the board at uh, Piemonte Agency for International Business Development, the organization that helps foreign businesses uh, to enter Italian markets and assists uh, Italian companies from Piemont region in their international expansion. Buongiorno, Dario. Buongiorno. Good morning to everyone. Dario, unfortunately, in my ex- international experience, I have uh, not had much opportunity to deal with Italy business-wise. But even as a tourist, I felt quite a big uh, difference between different regions in Italy. And as far as I know, the local regulations and procedures for the same business activities uh, vary according to the municipality. What should foreign business consider in connection with this? I think your impression is absolutely right. Uh, There is a huge difference between regions uh, in Italy and there is a huge difference not only in regarding the, let's say, administrative uh, uh, procedures, but also regarding the funds. So, for example, uh, the regions in the south, uh, they have a lot of funds, for example, for attracting investment from abroad. So why they are not so successful in attracting investment from abroad that usually goes to the north of Italy? Uh, The point is that uh, money is not enough because actually you need, uh, especially... Uh, I mean, modern companies uh, uh, that want to do business maybe in tech or in innovative uh, fields, they need much more than money. They need uh, an ecosystem. They need uh, other companies to to cooperate, to work with. They need a logistic uh, system that is quite developed. And so sometimes it happens that even if uh, the region in the south, the regions in the south have a lot of Uh, funds that can use for uh, investment attraction, actually many companies are coming to the north. Uh, Of course, uh, I mean, there are also companies that are going to the south uh, because the south of Italy has some uh, specific uh, fields where they are very strong. For example, food uh, uh, is one of them. Uh, In Piemonte, the the problem is that we are one of the regions that has less funds uh, devoted to investment attractions because we are considered, let's say, a traditionally quite uh, rich region in uh, in economic sense. Uh, We are historically the manufacturing uh, region of Italy. We were the house of uh, Fiat, the the automotive factory that now is called Stellantis in the group with Peugeot. Uh, We have uh, a lot of... uh, manufacturing companies in various fields. We have been the house of textile in Italy with the, the district of Biella that is still one of the strongest in, uh, in the world. Uh, we are a very strong region regarding food. We are the house of uh, Ferrero and Lavazza, just to say two big companies that probably everybody knows. Uh, and now we are also among the regions that are more uh, innovative. Uh, We devote a lot of uh, uh, money to research and development, particularly from the private sector. And this is quite an exception in Italy because actually it's rare that uh, uh, the private sector finances so much the the R&D. And we are becoming, uh, well, I would say we are now the region of space in Italy. Uh, Actually, 60% of the space station has been manufactured in Turin and all the big big companies uh, around the world are establishing some uh, branch here in Turin to work with the very vibrant ecosystem of space companies that we have uh, in our our region. So, uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's completely different, uh, the motivation to invest uh, in the south, in the north, in Lombardy or or uh, in Piemonte is uh, everything change. You are absolutely right. Moving to the uh, sectors here yeah, or the uh, potential cooperation fields, according to the uh, import statistics, the biggest share is the commodities like oil and gas, uh, followed by medicine and uh, electricity. But to your opinion, what would uh, have the demand in Italy? 
from the point of view of value added goods is it possible to export something uh, like you, you already have as as i teach to my student of uh, international economics uh, trade uh, uh, is beneficial for for both parts i mean we import a lot of foods for example even if we are <laughs> a very strong nation uh, regarding food we import a lot of food from from spain and from the mediterranean in general so uh, i i think that there is no limit uh, the fact of doing business so uh, i would say that this is uh, absolutely frequent also in all, all over italy because actually I see that uh, in the south, in the north, uh, with, without any difference. For example, we have a, a vibrant ecosystem in space and a, a, a fantastic uh, amount of companies that are dealing with space uh, industry and space economy. One of the last companies that came to Piemonte and established a branch in Piemonte is a company of a guy that comes from Ukraine where he was actually uh, one of the youngest uh, president of the Ukrainian Space Agency. And he decided to come to Piemonte because uh, uh, he thought that he could have easier business uh, relationship with other companies, uh, even if he is uh, the, the, the CEO of a inno very innovative company uh, based on technology and uh, very value-added products. So I think uh, it's uh, absolutely possible for everyone. Okay. Let's imagine that uh, Ukrainian uh, electric uh, equipment producing company is willing to enter Italy. Uh, what kind of steps uh, or roadmap would you suggest them to take? You have to understand exactly where it is more convenient for you to come. For example, maybe you can be interested in working with uh, a, a big player. This big player is based, uh, I don't know, in Veneto or in Lombardy, and you will try to uh, establish your branch in Veneto or in Lombardy. There are multiple occasions for that. You can come for a fair, uh, you can organize uh, a mission or something like that. You will, be, you will have some uh, help from the local uh, uh, agency for that. Uh, and if you want then to invest, uh, as I was saying, uh, it depends from the regions, but usually you have an entity, uh, public or semi-public, that will help you to find, for example, the location, uh, to find, uh, to, be, to get in touch with the right uh, actors for fa having funds. Having funds and having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, yes. <laughs> Um, we are working mostly with uh, small uh, and uh, middle enterprises, uh, and uh, uh, they are mostly like in, in B2B sector. Uh, and uh, I believe that they will start initially not with uh, investing in the region, but to s in selling with the region. And uh, in my experience of working with embassies and uh, governmental organizations uh, of some country, uh, they are mostly... Uh, uh, dedicated to the support of investments in the country and helping own companies to, to to go internationally. In particular, we are devoted to small medium enterprises and uh, to stimulate uh, B2B. For example, uh, Amazon uh, invested uh, in uh, Piemonte with uh, two big facilities. And I mean, Amazon doesn't need our support to invest. They arrive and they decide whatever they want. So we are absolutely devoted only to the small medium enterprise support. But I would say that also the Italian trade agency, that uh, as I said, is the Italian body for that, is also working uh, a lot with this B2B development. In my practice, uh, it is better to talk to real, like local players, yeah, about that uh, to understand the games of rules uh, at the market. How easy it is in Italy to get this cold contacts without introduction? I think it's very easy. Uh, in Italy, it's much more complicated to have uh, contacts with the public entities than uh, with the private ones. So, for example, uh, the, the, the private small medium enterprises uh, are absolutely open and the entrepreneur uh, himself or herself is really willing to do business. Uh, of course, if you go 
towards big companies, big organizations, and in particular public, maybe public uh, institution or state-owned companies or something like that, it's another world. Uh, in that case, it's better to have an introduction. It's uh, you, you have to understand the, which are the right people to contact, uh, and it's a different thing. But with small medium enterprise, no problem. Talking about the B two B events, you mentioned a lot about the international fairs uh, abroad. Yeah, uh, how it is uh, popular still to have. Uh, B2B events in Italy, uh, so is it worth going there and uh, meet people? Milan, of course, is the center of this kind of, uh, of events. There are an incredible amount of, of uh, B2B fairs uh, and other events uh, in, in uh, Lombardy, but also, I mean, uh, all, all around Italy it is organized. In particular, for example, in Piemonte, we, as an agency, take care of the organization of two big events, one about aerospace, uh, that is the aerospace and defense meetings, that is the biggest bin- business convention in Italy about this f- in, in this sector, and the uh, uh, VTM, the vehicle transportation meeting about mobility, that is also a very big business convention about uh, mobility, uh, and they both are held in Turin. Is there any other sources, like common sources in Italy, where you could find your clients, or what, what, if, if you if you if it would be you, yes, entering Italy, where would you go to uh, generate uh, potential leads for your B two B partnership or cooperation? Most of the time, uh, people coming directly to the events, uh, and uh, they are trying to sell their products, uh, entrepreneur to entrepreneur. That's for sure. You can find the uh, agents also. Uh, for example, we have uh, some contacts with people that represent uh, in Italy a portfolio of foreign companies and their products. Uh, and so, of course, they are uh, working actively on, on, on that. If you don't know the country, you don't know how to check, how to background check the potential partner, uh, you can stay in the situation when this agent is actually not working. Yeah? So the, <laughs> how, how to know whether it, he really has this uh, uh, contacts in, in the country or uh, he at least exists as a, a legal entity yeah, in, in the country. First of all, to check the portfolio of clients of the agent. Then you can check, for example, through the embassy if it, if it is re- real entity or not, because they, they have a list. In any case, you should, at least in the beginning, start uh, asking to to pay for uh, with success fees and not for, with the, with the, with the standard uh, contract it is possible it is allowed many agents work in this way mm-hmm. uh, and so i think this is a good way to check the affordability of uh, your possible partner if we go further yeah and understanding more understanding the italians uh how would you describe uh, the business culture in Italy if, if there is such, yeah, if, if you can feel that it is uh, to some extent different? And what should be considered when you are starting sales to Italy in terms of this business culture? The majority of entrepreneurs, especially in the center north of Italy, are very good. They are really at high level regarding business culture. The problem is that we have few entrepreneurs with respect to to what we would like to have. So we would like to have more entrepreneurs. But unfortunately, in general, in Italy, there has been a shift uh, since, uh, I would say, the 80s onwards uh, toward the public employment instead of of the entrepreneurship uh, activity. But the entrepreneurs that we have are really, uh, really good. It's very difficult that you can sign a contract or sign a deal directly at a fair, for example, or a B2B meeting. Uh, But I would say that if they are convinced of the product, of the company, of the other entrepreneur, everything is quite fast and uh, and there is not really a problem. Of course, once you shake hands at the business fair, it doesn't mean that the deal is concluded. Uh, And that's uh, uh, the difference with respect to other culture. For example, uh, in Israel, we have this problem that when you shake hands at the business meeting, they think that the deal is concluded and everything is okay. 
uh, and uh, you come back to Italy just to prepare the, the contract. No, it's not like that. But uh, in, on the other hand, it's not even something that uh, they, they will forget about you as soon as they will come back to Italy. It, not at all. Italy is an export country. So we made business from to all over the world. How do you think in connection with to this uh, idea you just mentioned, uh, we are talking about im- exporters to Italy yeah? and Italy at the same time is very, very exporting country. Yeah? So yeah, maybe uh, when you are exporting to Italy, you should consider those industries that could use your part of the product to build own one and then re-export that to other countries. Well, actually it happens. It happens that there are companies uh, that, for example, are from uh, the Mediterranean, the Middle East, uh, or uh, even Asia, that come to Italy as a, a door for Europe, for example, as a gate for Europe. It's also nice to have this brand, let's say, Italy, uh, because most of the time there are some quality requirements that are connected with the, the Italian Italian export. So it is also good for, for this reason. We have a good reputation for quality and the Italian brand is, uh, is quite recognized. And w- when you are starting negotiations already with Italian companies, uh, what should you know about the meeting cultures, uh, culture in Italy? The best business in Italy probably are made at lunch or dinner. So... Uh, a secret <laughs> to, let's say, finalize in the best way a, a, a deal is to organize a nice lunch or dinner with the, the Italian entrepreneur. Because uh, uh, we are a country where this is very much appreciated. How uh, open and transparent are, are Italians in business negotiations in general? How common it is like to have a hidden agenda, for example. I think it really depends from uh, from the entrepreneurs. Very young entrepreneurs, startups, something like that, they are always in what I call the pitch mode. The pitch mode. So they are always presenting themselves much better than it is the, the, the real situation. But if you are experienced, you just made the right questions and you immediately understand at which level they are and if they have a business model or not. If you have to talk with uh, uh, established uh, small medium enterprise that may usually are owned by the same family since generation and they are very solid uh, in in their business, in their products, uh, there is not really an issue of, uh, of transparency. If you ask, of, of course, for a, a secret patent or something like that, uh, maybe they will say to you, I'm not, I'm not going to disclose that. But uh, if you don't make jokes about Italian uh, or <laughs> about uh, mafia or something like that, uh, where maybe, especially in the north, uh, we are very sensitive to that. I have prepared one joke about the mafia at the end of our conversations. So, <laughs> so I will be already unpolite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is, is the English common language, uh, like common, common business language, so how important it is to know Italian uh, to make business in Italy and uh, from starting from conversation and ending with uh, marketing materials? A lot of companies, unfortunately, are not so fluent in, in English. So maybe they are able to, but sometimes they will take with them people to talk to in English. And this creates a problem because, of course, uh, it's not entrepreneur to entrepreneur, but uh, it it has something in the middle. So, of course, knowing Italian and speaking Italian, it's very, it's very different, Uh, facilitates uh, all the all the situation. But uh, uh, if you go to companies that are established since a long time. Maybe there is the new generation of, uh, of the family that is running the company. Usually there is really no problem in interacting uh, in English. And in terms of marketing materials like website or brochures, should uh, you have them in Italian as well? I would say that you can start in English and then understand in the market. It's not necessary to have a, a site in Italian immediately if you don't know yet the market uh, you, are, you are going to. According to your opinion, have, uh, has the war uh, in Ukraine 
influenced uh, the Italian business uh, economy in, in general? This war has uh, taken everybody really in, in, in surprise because we, we were not used to have uh, a war in Europe, uh, uh, really. So the situation completely completely changed, uh, the international situation, the also the cost uh, in general have been impacted by this war. There were many business relations with Russia, with the Russian federations from the Italian companies. And there were many business relations with Ukraine from Italy. And so actually it impacted in both ways because it was difficult to do business with Ukraine and it was almost impossible to from, from one day to another, really, to make business with Russia. Uh, for example, we had even big uh, companies uh, dealing with uh, oil extraction and electricity and everything uh, that were established in uh, in uh, Russian Federation, and now they are they they are closed. Uh, and we are t- we are not talking about small companies. We are we were talking about big companies with big investment and big facilities, and now they are closed. They are owned by the Russian government. So you can imagine how things changed in a few months. And the same was with Ukraine. I mean, with Ukraine, there was there, there is still a, a huge interaction, a huge trade, especially with respect to some commodities that comes from, from there, in a, either in food or in oil and gas. But of course, it's problematic because we are we are talking with all the difficulties connected with the, with the the war and the, and the difficulties of transportation. Transportation, exactly. Now, the main problem for Italy is about the cost of uh, the, the the inputs. The price of the inputs has doubled, uh, in some cases, even more. And so for Italian companies, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult right now. I, I would say not only Italian, all, all over Europe. But in Germany, for example, they had a lot of public aid to help uh, German companies to deal with these prices. In Italy, we don't have such capability of, uh, of public intervention. In terms of um, the business culture, or approaches to businesses, yeah. How, uh, if you feel that, yeah. So, uh, did that influence uh, the decision-making processes, the planning of the small businesses, uh, the behavior of the market? Yeah. Because in Ukraine, for example, we we feel yeah. that we are now uh, so agile that uh, is almost impossible. Yeah. So you you are like living in under the bombing. Um, situation and still you are doing business and th- th- that's why actually it is still possible to make business with Ukrainians. Uh, do, do you feel that in, in Italy, uh, is it changing the DNA of making business Yeah, uh, in, among the businessmen? In Italy, there is a lot of uh, empathy with Ukraine in this moment. So I, I, I must say that uh, there has been a, a big sentiment of uh, injustice with respect to what happened. So for sure, in in this moment, there are a lot of new relationships that are coming out with Ukraine, uh, exactly because uh, it is uh, uh, something that really uh, let us completely astonished. I, I, I must say that the, the the biggest change I saw was not really from the war, but uh, from the COVID uh, situation. Uh, so, for example, there there has been a, a huge relocation from all European companies to Europe with respect to Asia. So, for example, we never received so many delegations from uh, Nordic countries, Scandinavian countries. Uh, We had this agreement with the German regions that was also not very frequent to do it in the past because actually they they want to, let's say, relocate the supply chain and have everything close. And actually, they are very willing to do business, in particular with the north of Italy, because with the, in the north of Italy, they have the same quality, for example, of, of uh, the top German players, but at half of the cost. And so uh, I uh, this was a radical change that I saw. 
I, I never saw many delegations like this in, in the recent uh, years. Now everybody wants to control their supply chain and not just to delegate uh, from uh, the other part of the world. Thank you for that answer and thank you for the whole conversation. I have now prepared some experiment. Uh, it is called Blitz Quiz, ruining the stereotypes about Italy. Uh, so, <laughs> Because most of the stereotypes I have are connected not with business. Yeah, So uh, we uh, always uh, see the Italy through the perspective of uh, very tasty food, uh, amazing landscapes and... Uh, uh, history uh, background, yeah. So I dicked uh, some of uh, stereotypes, and uh, your task is uh, to answer quickly true or false. So, ready? Yes. Uh, Italian business culture respects the hierarchical structure, so job titles and responsibilities are very important. Uh, I would say true, yes. Italians generally like to establish relaxed personal relationships in the business. Absolutely true. You need to be careful making business in Sicilia because Italian mafia is still there. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is true that it's still there, but uh, there are all, a lot of good entrepreneurs also in Sicily. So. <laughs> Italians are obsessed with fashion, so pay attention to your outfit. Uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Italians are always late to meetings. No, false. Italians are obsessed with food, so be prepared to eat a lot during your business trips. True. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, so most of stereotypes are true about the, uh, the Italy. That's uh, interesting. So one final advice to Ukrainian exporters. Explore the possibilities of doing business to Italy. Uh, you have uh, a lot of these, let's say, bodies like uh, our agency. But so don't consider just, uh, uh, for example, Germany as the place where to do business in Europe. Italy has a lot of opportunities, a lot of possibilities of, uh, of doing business together. So come, see, uh, experience also the, the, the beauty of, uh, of Italy, and I'm sure that uh, there will be possibilities of doing great things together. Thank you. Thank you for being with us at uh, the show and sharing your experience. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure for me. You were listening to the Start Global Insights the podcast for businesses looking to expand globally, with your host, Dmitro Švets. Find our episodes on Google and Apple Podcasts and other major platforms, including YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, not to miss the next episode about another interesting country and how to make your business there. <laughs>